In this video, I'm going to show you all the teardown steps just to get to the carburetor. So that involves taking the seat off, the air box off, the front plastics, the gas tank, and the throttle cable, and the choke cable. Easy enough to take the seat off by reaching up under here, pulling it, pushing up. The next step would be to take the radiator, like plastic piece off here, which is this one bolt up here and this other bolt. It just lifts up and comes off. I do not have mine on right now. The next step is getting the front plastics off, which should be one bolt here, one bolt here. You may have a little plastic piece that covers your uh, fuel tank around here. I don't have mine on, but typically it's just two bolts here. And then there's one bolt that sits right here and the one right here. Once you take those out, that piece should come off. But once you get these two here, you have one bolt that sits right down here in this corner. And then you have one up on this upper area here. You may have a headlight here. I don't have mine. But there's another bolt that sits up here. And it's the same on the other side for those two. And then you have one right here in the center. Once you get all those bolts removed, all you have to do is lift this up over the reverse switch. Once you lift it up over that, all you have to do is separate the plastic right here and pull out and push up this way. Once you do that, the front plastics will be removed. To remove the gas tank, you have one bolt here in the rear. You have one up front here, which I have mine already removed. And you have one on the opposite side. Take all three of those out. And then what you want to do is reach down in here. You can pull this plastic back and get your fuel line. Mine is a clear line. And all you got to do is pull that fuel line I would pinch it if I were you, if you have gas in yours, pinch it and pull up and it will be hard to come out for the first time, especially if you don't have yours off as often as mine, but it, these fuel lines will get hard, but all you have to do if I were you is pinch them and pull up on it, kind of kink it just a little bit and all you got to do is pull up with it, they come right off. You may have like a rubber heat shield that sits in between your engine and your gas tank all you gotta do is cut the zip ties for those. I believe there's one up front, well, two up front on both sides and somewhere in the rear. When I bought this four wheeler, it did not have it. So the next step for me is taking the snorkel piece off, which all it is is one bolt here, which I already have removed, and then one bolt on the other side, and then it easily comes up off of there. Make sure that your carburetor bowl breather hose is up out of the way. I really don't know where this comes like at factory, like where this uh, is routed at. But I route mine inside the air box so water does not get sucked in here. But to get the air box off, obviously it's just to pop these tabs. Once you pop all these tabs and pull your crankcase ventilation hose, which mine is not connected right now, but it is typically right in there. All you gotta do is just pop it out. Once you do that, you can wiggle the top of it, it comes off and remove your air filter with it. And to proceed to the next step, what you have to do is take off this bolt and the one on the other side and slide this back for that small gap that you have in there. Go ahead and fill in that gap when you push this back and it'll make the carburetors that much easier to get out. Once you have those bolts out and you can freely move this, what you wanna do next is get a screwdriver and or a drill to be able to get these Phillips out of here. And these can like start sliding around, but you want to make sure that these are really loose so they can pop off the air box. Because once you get both of these loose, what you want to do is pull right here and push on both sides. And both of these will pop off and you can lift this up over this tab right there. And it will sit right on top of it. So you have plenty of room to work with in this area so you can get these two clamps off and get these two. So you can get these two intake hoses out of here. With those two screws removed, I was able to push on this to push back. Now I can lift up in the rear here. Wiggle it back a little bit. And it pops off of there just like so. Kind of hard when you have one hand. But that is as far back as, I, as mine will go. And now I have this little distance in here that once I get these off, I will slide these up out of here and not have any trouble when trying to get them out. Now I do not know for sure if these are the stock sizes that are on, you know, other Raptor 660s, but these for mine take a two and a half 
millimeter alum, which you can use keys on these, but they're just making your life that much harder. So if I were you, I would go out and buy one of these and make your life so much easier when trying to tear this apart because once you put it down in there, you can easily just use the T-handle and start unscrewing it. And whenever you're trying to get the ones in the front, which mine are sideways, I put them there so they're easier access. I can just easily access them like that. And I have plenty of room to be able to unscrew this out. But what you want to do is go ahead and get both of these unscrewed. So that one there, this one over here. And you want to disconnect this line and this line once you do. And once you get those undone, so these easily pop off. Once you get this done, all you want to do is pull back on it and lift up. And both of these will be able to come out that way. I have that one loosened up all the way that it'll go before it uh, comes apart. I'm just going to pull back on it, squeeze a little bit, there it goes. Now my boots are in terrible condition, so I hope that yours does not have any cracks like mine, but I have done countless amounts of tests to see if they like seep through at all, but they don't, so I'm not going to replace them, but if yours starts having worse cracks than this, I would replace yours, even though these are not cheap but they will cause you a ton of headaches. The next step is to get the choke cable off, which is a 12 millimeter, and you want to be very careful with that nut because they will easily round off. I've actually had one round off on this one, and I have replaced it, and it is not cheap. So make sure it is firmly on there, and just take your time with this because you do not want to have to buy this. Another thing to note this choke cable does have a spring on it, and it has a needle right on the end of it. You want to make sure that needle comes out with this and that you do not lose that piece. But here it is with the spring, and it's got uh, the wire inside of it. And just like that, mine falls apart, so I'm going to have to ensure that I find that piece and put it back together. I found the piece that fell off, which is this needle here. But, to install this, if yours fell off like mine, all you have to do is push back this spring, and once you're trying to insert it, insert that bead into the side here. And once you get it on the side, you just pull it up straight and allow that spring to push up against it, which will hold it in place, but it's not perfect. So you just want to be careful with this and not bump into it too much or get it caught on anything, because it will rip this piece off of there. And if you lose this, then you're just in a world full of headaches trying to have to buy this piece because you'll buy you'll have to buy this whole kit just like that it's back installed that bead is in the middle of there and that spring is pushing up against the back side of that bead once you have that you want to make sure that you don't bump into this put it up somewhere where you will not hit this i don't really have much of a place to put it but i'm just going to ensure that i do not lose this piece the next step is getting the throttle cable off which most people will have this plate around here. I've lost my plate and also all of these holes were stripped out. So I don't know where my plate went. But I find the easiest way is to make sure that you can crack this open a little bit. But what you want to do is open this all the way. So you have a little bit of slack in there to grab from the cable. And you want to stick a pick in there. And once you stick a pick up in there, you can knock that bead out. And you do not want to lose that brass bead. If you lose that brass bead... It, it just causes you a lot of trouble like trying to find that especially because you know it's not magnetic it is very hard to find so keep good care of this piece and do not lose it after that all you have to do is take an eight millimeter to this and loosen this all the way out until you get the cable to come out with it make sure that your cable is not twisting with this piece because all you're doing is basically just ruining your cable so you want to make sure that this is a stationary and that this is the only thing that is moving. But once you back this all the way out, this cable will be able to slide through this tube here and out. And that's basically it. Once you do that, you move on to these two clamps right here in the middle. Getting these clamps off for the same exact way as the previous. Just use whatever Allen size that was for the previous. It should be the same size. And all you got to do is back these off almost until the thread is all the way out and both of the carburetors will be able to come out. Both of the clamps are loosened up and just lean it back just a little bit and then they pop out. 
You want to make sure that you do not turn these upside down or lean them because they are most likely full of gas. So I advise you to take these out of here straight up and I will show you in a second on how to get the gas out of these. The method that I use to get the gas out of these carburetors after I take them off is to put this tube down inside my gas tank. So whenever I lean it down here, make sure I have that inside the gas tank and put a finger over top of the filler tube. So this right here, because it will dump out of this because it's got a little bit in here. So put your finger over top of this, stick this tube down into your gas tank and turn it upside down and all the gas will escape out through here. Once it's done with that, you can turn it back over and face this towards your gas tank and dump the rest of it out. And that's it. That's how you get the carburetors off of a Raptor 660. Now, if you're going to do extensive work on it, I would recommend wrapping this in like some microfiber tiles and putting it away so you don't get any contaminants in it. Or if you're working on it, go ahead and put it on your workbench, but just ensure that you don't get anything in this. But yeah, that is it. Feel free to ask me anything whatsoever but if you want any more videos like this please subscribe